Hello wonderful people, it's Wild here. Today I'll be showing you how to build this Japanese style house. This gorgeous house is surprisingly simple to create and I'll also show you some tips and ideas for decorating your Japanese house so stay tuned till the end of the video for that. Let's get building. The materials you'll need for this build will be on your screen now. Here is the outline for today's build. You can see there are only points marked for the outline as this build sits up on stilts and most of the points are three blocks apart with the diagonal ones on the corner and then this back section is set one block in on either side and is two blocks on the diagonal from this block here which is two blocks to the side of this corner one. Since these are going to be having the posts put on top of them, you can place in these outlines to help you locate your build. We'll begin this build by putting in some posts, starting with the three across the back, which are two blocks high, and I'm using some stripped oak logs here. Then I'll also build this one up two blocks high, and this is the one that stands out as it's only two blocks from everything else. For the rest of these posts, we'll build up too high and then place a dirt block on the back side of the post and then come forward to with some more of the stripped oak logs. And this way, the oak logs are always facing out towards the side of the build. So this one faces towards the back, these to face towards this side and so forth. Here's how this should look from above and from the front. Next grab some spruce trapdoors, looms and an oak plank. We'll place the oak plank on top of this post at the back in the corner here and then grab your spruce trapdoors and on the upper level of the second block, so that means you can still place a block above it, you want to place trapdoors going all the way around the build. You can see these are sitting behind the three high posts. And then when we get round to the other side of the build, let's go right around. The easiest way to place these is to be holding shift and place it on the edge of the next trapdoor. But you can see when we get to the back side of the build, these will run straight into the two high posts and then we will connect them up on the flat sides. right round to here. So this is how it should look. Then grab your looms and you want to place these all the way around on top of this outline making sure you rotate so this side is always hidden. And you can see how that looks when you see the side texture of the looms. Now we'll begin adding in the floor using looms, dried kelp blocks, stripped spruce logs and some oak slabs. If you place the looms facing back and forth so the textures connect up, it looks like tatami mats. So we'll be having three rows of these tatami mats. One, two, three. And each tatami mat uses two of these uh, looms. It's a great way to add texture to the floor of a Japanese build. Then switch to some strip spruce logs and fill in this section at the back of the build. Coming out one more. Come one in from either side here. Making sure you press shift when you're clicking on the rest of these looms, otherwise you'll open up the loom interface. And then we'll create one more tatami mat off-centered for this walkway. The rest will fill in with some dried kelp blocks. Thank you. 
Now switching over to the oak slabs will create the kind of walkway around the build. At this front centre section, only build out one as we'll be adding a staircase in here and then all the way around the rest fill in too deep to line up with the rest of these uh, posts. On this side I'll come out two into the back section. Then I'll come around the other side. And I'll just connect up to here. You should line up these slabs across the back of the build. Now there's a nice solid foundation to build on, we can start adding in the walls, beginning on this front section where there's the kelp flooring by building up four high, one, two, three, four, with spruce logs spaced three apart. And these are going to wrap all the way around the build. I'll leave a three block gap and put in another post here between these sections and then continue along this wall. Like this. Then for the back section of the build, on the two corners, build up three high and for swell as one in the centre. Then switch to some stripped spruce logs. We want to add a connecting section between each of these posts. We'll do this around the outside of the kelp section. In between this gap where we have the little offset tatami mat, we'll place in a block here, as well as along this section of the wall. And then around the outside of the build again. Make sure you leave the front centre section open for the doorway. To fill in the walls themselves, start at the back section of the build where we'll be using trapdoors to create the walls. You want to build too high all the way around with the spruce trapdoors, making sure you're placing these from the outside of the build, so they're on this outside loom block. And just place these all around. On top of these, place one layer of birch trapdoors. Having them unflipped makes it a lot easier to place them in. And then on these two blocks here, and the opposite ones on this side, place one um, more spruce trapdoor. And then you can flip all of the trapdoors to fill in the walls. We'll also use the trapdoors to create the dividing walls between the front room and the back room. And we'll place these from the inside of the back room, three high. And we'll also create a little doorway, so building three high. I'm just using these trapdoors as a placeholder block. And then placing them over the top of the walkway. So you can see it creates a little room. For the rest of the walls on the larger front section, begin by building three high on either side of each section. Then using birch trapdoors and placing them from the outside, you'll want to flip them so that you have the handles of the trapdoors at the top and bottom. And then you can place a sand on top of this. So you can see to do these trapdoors, you have to first place the bottom one to place the top one, and then you can flip that and then break the bottom trapdoor and place in the bottom trapdoor by clicking on the top trapdoor. You can also achieve this by using a placeholder block to place in your trapdoors, like this. But I just find it easier to not have to switch between my blocks. And I'll do this in each of these sections.
Once again, I'm leaving the front center section open. Now's a good time that we've got the walls and the floor in to go underneath the build, especially if you're creating this in survival, and break a few of the trapdoors in the corners to add in some lanterns. Now, of course, if you're building this in creative, you could use light blocks here, but in survival, tucking them behind these posts is a great way to hide the lighting. And I think I'll need to place one in the center here. Let's line it up with some posts. There we go. Now we'll work on filling in this doorway. First we'll build a stair though. Just wrapping around the stairs like this. So you create a nice smooth finish. Then underneath I'll place in some oak slabs. Before I place in my next layer of stairs. Which will also curve around. Once again, I'll place in some slabs. You might need to place a placeholder block to place these in. And my final layer of stairs. Now we have a nice walkway up to where our door will be. We could create the door. And I'll create a circular look using some stairs here. Some spruce stairs. Then I'll place a spruce trap door at the top. Coming from the inside, I'll create a door frame out of some more spruce trap doors. And using a placeholder block, I'll place one above where the door will be. And then I'm placing my door, so I'll have to look from the inside, so it sits on top of this block here and is bumped slightly out when you look from the front. And it should open outwards. Then you can switch to some sand and build across the top. To finish off the base structure of the walls, grab some more spruce logs and place them in the corners of the large section. And then we'll be connecting these up and when we get to a post, use a placeholder block to place the log facing forward. This just adds a finishing edge to the build and then when we put the roof on top, you'll get a hint of spruce peeking out from underneath. Before we get adding in the details on the roofs, we'll add in some gables. For the larger gables, build across the section here with some spruce slabs. Then place some strip spruce logs on top of these slabs with a red terracotta block in the center. So there should be three logs either side of the terracotta block. Then using sand, fill in the walls and leave room for another one of these birch window trap doors. Finishing off with a sand block on top. And this goes on both sides. For some small gables at the front and back, begin with some sand, making sure that it's centered on this three block section here. Then place in a trapdoor and a sand on top. And once again on the back. This is just sitting straight on top of the spruce logs that we placed just before. To begin the decorations, start with some dark oak signs and place these along these blocks here, so on the top layer of sand, all the way around the build. This can seem a bit of a tedious process, but it's the small details like this that really add to the finished look of a build. And once you get into the swing of it, it really doesn't take too long at all. When you get round to this side here, you want to stop placing your signs once you get above this window, leaving this final sand block clear. Then you can just continue round to the other side of the build.
Once that's in, we'll start adding in some of the posts for the railing that goes around this walkway here, starting either side of this staircase and then going in the corners. So you'll see this is a five block gap. On the sides of the builds, place them on either side and then in the center. This should also leave you with a five block gap. And then when you get round to this section of the build, you won't be able to place in the other side of your red pillar, but you will have five blocks here to put in the railing. And we'll start that by putting in some jungle stairs coming off of each of these red terracotta blocks. Now on top of each of the red terracotta blocks, place a spruce lock. And then cover up the faces of the red terracotta block with some jungle trapdoors. And then in the in-between sections, grab some jungle fences and fence gates to connect the railing. Finally, place in some jungle fences on top of each of these jungle stairs. Keep in mind to leave this final jungle stair free from a jungle fence. Just a few more things to add to the railing. With some more jungle fences build up too high on each of the spruce blocks. On this stair here that doesn't have a jungle fence on it, come round so you're facing towards the front of the build and build three high with spruce trapdoors and flip them. And then on the other side of the build where the walkway wraps around the back, where we don't have the uh, the dark oak sign, build up four high, one, two, three, four, with some spruce trapdoors and flip them. And then again, continue with the jungle fences. Another good detail to add is some jungle buttons. And I'm placing these underneath the logs, as well as on these posts here just so they're visible from the outside. It's really starting to come together now. Next step is the roof. And this is de a defining feature of a Japanese build. So the roof will have a point here as well as one going over the gable and then a cover over the top of the walkway. But we're going to be starting at the back with some dark oak slabs to create the roof. First building straight across this section here, coming one out on either side. And then on the slab down from this, place another row of them. Then connecting up the next row of slabs by placing two here on either side. We'll place in one more row. Finally, to finish up the look from the inside, grab some dark oak slabs and you'll also be placing these in here so they're level with that last row of slabs we placed. Now that the back roof's in, we can begin on the main roof of the build, starting with some red nether brick slabs in the corners on top of these posts. We're creating a little corner sweeping decoration which is characteristic of this Japanese style. So I'm placing two dark oak slabs either side of here. And now this can be a bit tricky to place so I just find it easier to place some slabs then break and replace to build them up so you can see the red nether brick poking out from underneath. And then I'll place a block on top of this 
and finally a dark oak fence. Now you can create this decoration on the other four corners on top of the rest of these posts. You'll see this connects up nicely with the roof we've already built at the back. Next, sticking with the dark oak, we'll grab some slabs out first and we're going to create the edge that'll go over the top of this larger gable and connect up with this section over the walkway. You want to place a slab so it's following down with these slabs here. Then come up with this, placing a block, then a slab, and then another block, and then switch to some dark oak stairs and place them up and down, zigzagging your way up the height of the gable. When you've reached the center, just place in a dark oak slab, and then you want to do the other thing on the other side to connect back up. Here's how it should look from looking what from one end as well as from the front. And once you've created this one, you can create the same thing on the other side of the build. When you come to this side of this one where it connects up to the roof, you'll see there's already slab place where you would go to place one. So in this case, you just continue on by placing in your block and then continuing up the pattern with a slab, a block, and then the stairs. Next we'll create the dark oak edge around this front gable here, starting with some dark oak slabs and some red nether brick slabs placed at the lower level here. Then switch back to your dark oak stairs and zigzag them back and forth just like we did on the larger gable. And just as before, add a dark oak slab in the center. We'll also be creating a little finial here by placing a stair on top and then some slabs. Then we'll come back one more slab and use some placeholder blocks to build two up on the diagonal with some stairs. You can use whatever placeholder block you'd like, dirt works great, but I'm just using some dark oak. I'll finish off by placing a fence on the front. Then I'll create the same decoration on the back small gable. Now that all the dark oak prep work is in, we can begin filling in the roof with some red nether brick slabs and stairs. Start by coming across the front of the build here, connecting the two decorative swoops on either side with some slabs, and then just come up one slab each time. So you have a total of three slabs going up. Then you can fill in the rest of the front of the roof with some stairs, making sure that they wrap around to connect up with this small gable here. Now 
Next, rotate round to the back side. And for here, you can begin filling in the slabs, but just connect up to the small dark oak roof that goes over the back room. Then come up one slab and build straight across. And pretty much continue as normal. And then just fill in the rest of the roof with stairs, just as on the front. The next section of roof to fill in are the two sides. So to do this, you want to place the first layer down on the diagonal from here and build straight across. Then connect up to these uh, red nether brick slabs that we placed originally when creating the corner decorations. And then just place in one more layer of slabs to fill in the gap. And this roofing will be the same on the other side of the build. This roof still needs a decorative beam across the top. So to create that, you'll need some stripped spruce logs. And these can be a little tricky to place, but using some placeholder blocks, you want to face them so you can see this top texture all the way along the beam. Once that's in, switch to some dark oak buttons and place one on every other block. And this is on the other side as well. And now we'll create some swooping details on top of this beam. Start by placing in a dark oak stair with an upside down one facing outwards behind it. Then two slabs, another stair coming out from this one, and finally two more slabs. And you can create this detail on the other side as well. Then you can hang a lantern from either side. And I also like to hang a lantern from each of these decorations. Another detail to add is with some jungle trapdoors and just place them in front of this red terracotta block on these gables here. Now the main construction is finished, but let's have a look at some ways to decorate this Japanese house. So here I've placed the Japanese house in a landscaped area and I've surrounded it with some bamboo, some cherry blossom trees and a meandering pathway with the Japanese style lanterns. You can also see that my house is sitting on the edge of this river and I've used some stone brick and mossy stone brick to terraform up a rocky formation underneath the house. If you're planning on displaying your houses in a similar way, you'll need to extend some of the posts to go into the water and then you may even need to shorten some of the posts around the back if it's going up into a hill. But let's have a look at how I've decorated the interior. As I enter my house, I've created a great room in the big section at the front. You can see I've used all sorts of decoration styles, including using banners for some decorations on the walls and in the furniture. I've created a small table sitting in the center, lots of shelves with some details on them. And I love this decoration here, the samurai sword on a stand. Walking further into my house behind these banners here which create a nice divide between the spaces I've created a little bedroom with a desk and then I've propped up some um, spruce slabs here so the bed looks like a futon type bed and I've placed some bamboo beside it. 
This house is surprisingly large, so it allows me to have a beautifully decorated interior on the bottom story, and then up behind these hidden staircases, I've got all my chests and things tucked away in the attic. For a tutorial on how to create these decorations, check out the video in the description down below. I'll show you how to make some banners, to create all the decorations, as well as some additional tips and tricks to decorate your Japanese build. So now you know how to create this gorgeous Japanese house. If you enjoyed today's video, please consider subscribing. Your support really means the world to me. And if you'd like to support me further, check out my Patreon where you can build and play alongside me. Don't forget to like and join my Discord to share a picture of your build, and I'll see you in another video.